In this movie, we're going to use the spot healing brush to retouch our model's faces, and we're going to do so non-destructively using an independent layer. So the first thing I'm going to do is go up to the file menu and choose the revert command in order to bring back that freckle on the first girl's forehead. And then I'm going to click on the top layer in the stack here inside the layers panel, and I'll create a new layer, either by going up to the layers panel flyout menu and choosing the new layer command, or just by pressing Control shift n or Command-Shift-N on the Mac. And I'll just call this layer Healing, and I'll click OK. And now I'm going to zoom in on our model's nose right here on the left-hand side. And she has a little bit of acne, which I completely sympathize with. I had it like crazy as a kid. But it's not going to interfere with her beauty in this photo. So I'm going to drop down to the Spot Healing Brush, which, again, you can get by choosing it from this flyout menu or by pressing the J key, which doesn't really make that much sense, but that's the key you press. And then you wanna go up to the options bar and turn on sample all layers. And that way you're sampling source information from every single layer inside the image. And that is the checkbox that allows you to work non-destructively when painting with the spot healing brush. All right, now I'm gonna reduce the size of my cursor by pressing the left bracket key a few times. And when you're painting away spots inside of an image, individual blemishes, then you want the brush to be just slightly larger than the blemish. And then you just click in order to make it go away. And so with these little guys around the nose here, I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit farther. We just need to click with a very small brush a whole bunch of times. And so you have to work fairly patiently with this tool. You can drag with it, by the way, but oftentimes things work out the best when you're just clicking with a tool. All right, so I'm just going to paint these guys away. And then about 20 or 30 clicks later, I end up with this effect here. So the nose cleans up pretty darn nicely, as you can see. And the truth of the matter is we've all got something, whether we're young and we have skin blemishes or we're old and wrinkled like I am, <laughs> there's plenty to clean up in any given portrait shot. All right, now let's say that I decide that I want to work on some of these freckles not because I've considered them to be problems inside the image, but rather just because I want to be able to focus on the girl's features as opposed to her skin details. Then I might just go ahead and paint over an area like so. So again, you don't have to just click, you can paint as well. All right, so I'll paint over that one and I'll paint next to here. Just avoid the hair as you're painting so that you don't bring in an extra detail inside that image. And now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit as well and I'll paint over here and here and just basically find anything that you want to paint over and go for it. It's really entirely up to you. The one thing I want to make sure of, however, as I'm working through this image is that I don't end up painting over something that really adds character to the subject of my photograph. So I wouldn't want to paint over a crease line like right here. That would be a gigantic no-no because it diminishes, as you can see here, it really diminishes her smile. So I'll go ahead and press Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac to undo that. I also recommend that you don't paint over eye creases because they lend personality to your subject. So I'm just trying to take it easy where I can. And now let's say I decide I want to paint over this freckle right here. I'll just go ahead and make my cursor bigger by pressing the right bracket key a few times. And then I will click. Now, if you paint too close to the hair, what you're going to do is you're just going to smudge it like that. And that's obviously not something we want. So I'll just go ahead and press Control-Z or Command-Z on the Mac to undo that change. And now I'll just scroll down by tossing the image while pressing the space bar. And I might get rid of these guys as well. And then I'll zoom in on this lower portion of the image and click on her chin a few times, maybe paint away those little details in her neck. All right, now I still have some work to do inside of this image, but it's going to take a different kind of healing brush. So I'm just going to switch over to the other model over here, the other girl, and I'll just go ahead and click on a few blemishes on her skin. Again, what I'm trying to do here is do whatever it is that the model would want me to do. So get rid of the things that maybe she would like to see gone. And you're really trying to imagine the person the way they see themselves. So again, you don't want to change who they are. You just want to make them their absolute best. All right, notice now I'm zoomed way in on the lips and we have a few little details right here. So I'll go ahead and just paint them away. And again, I'm mostly clicking inside the image as opposed to dragging. The tool is more successful that way, but you can drag if you find that it works for you. All right, so I'll just go ahead and paint away those details and a couple of other marks in the nose as well.
All right, so I'm going to speed things up. I don't want to bore you just by clicking over and over again inside this image. So we're just going to go ahead and fade to the result of about 40 or 50 clicks later. But after about 10 minutes of work, I can render these models so that they have nearly perfect skin. So just to give you a sense of what kind of difference this has made, I'll go up to the File menu and choose the Revert command. So this is the image as it appeared just a moment ago with a handful of the kinds of skin blemishes that life gives to all of us. And here's the image as it appears now, thanks to a little bit of patient and careful work with the Spot Healing Brush.